Um, besides your talent, which personal quality has allowed you the most, su the most success in the world of design? Besides just being a talented designer. Well, I, I, thank you for the compliment, first off, <laughs> <laughs> being a talented designer. I think my ability to work with others, uh, bring people from very diverse backgrounds together, whether it's getting designers and engineers who don't necessarily speak the same language, bring them together, or bring together designers from different cultures, from different experiences, bring them together, work on a project. I mean, I can think of those projects where you may have a designer from China, one from Brazil, and one from Germany working together. And I just think bringing pre people together from very diverse backgrounds is probably one of my strengths. I the would power agree. Of that, yeah. I worked with you long enough to know that that is one of your strengths. You're absolutely blessed with that. Um, we had a question, a second, a second row there, please. Uh, I know you've worked on a number of designs in your career. Is there one that's particularly special to you or one that uh, sort of you your most proud of? Yeah, I think there's a lot of them. Um, you know, one of the things that I really like about the work that I've done is that it's very much about the design. I'm told, very recently I was told, that I worked on 548 different designs, and I'm proud of so many of them. There are a couple of them, but um, I think Camaro was very important to me because it had been out of production for several years. The Chevrolet brand had a lot of very vanilla designs. And Camaro proved the Chevrolets could be cool and they could, they could have some energy, they could have passion. And then a lot of that energy that was in Camaro became a part of everything in that brand. So it was important for much more than Camaro itself, but for the whole brand. And at the time, our global design organization was fairly young and that kind of victory, that kind of success, um, helped to unite the whole corporation behind what we were doing. So that that was that's what I think of first is that car. There are others. Aerotech is a big deal, and just quite a few. I'm told you have uh, developed a new hobby of birthday cards. Can you talk a little bit about how that <laughs> happened and, uh, and who have been the lucky recipients that we might know? How, how, does, how it happened, I'm not quite sure, <laughs> but I, you know, I illustrate these birthday cards about this big, um, really personalized for the individual, and then I create a video, I select the music, I've got a library, you would not believe the library, of birthday musics, ranging from classical to jazz to hip hop. I mean, there's some, there's some crazy edgy stuff, stuff right too. There. I yeah. mean, they, oh yeah, yeah, beyond edgy. <laughs> and, and so I have this library of music. I have all the materials that illustrate this whole thing, and I create the video. And they're rather brief, but I them together, and I send them to people on their birthday. I, even, I even sent one to Tony Bennett. <laughs> I had to find a. He's very particular about the genre of music, you know, so I had to search and search and find the right Did you jazz. send something that he had recorded or no? no, no you no, found something I found else. some other jazz stuff. That's from, cool. From a couple, from uh, I think it was Ella Fitzgerald that I, I knew. That he was that like, That's yeah. awesome. You're a really three-dimensional guy. Uh, you know, uh, in my role here... Are you as, saying I'm fat? <laughs> <laughs> as, in my role here as historian. Yes. And, and in the decades that we, we studied, others who've gone before you, who yeah. are enshrined here as well, your reinvention of yourself is astounding. I mean, you're, you've always been very youthful and, and, and excited and, and exuberant, and, and you inspire others around you. Uh, you've held on to that. I've, I've met others who've been inducted in the hall here, yeah. who by the time they reached your age, forgive me for saying that, I, you know, uh, we're, we're just kind of done with it all. And you're not. You're going at it probably at least as furious as you were when you were at GM. What 
What can these young people learn from that example? And you should and see how my do studio <laughs> at home. And, and I keep saying to Jesse, you know, I'd love to be a DJ. I mean, you know, I, I create these playlists of music. I just, I'm a frustrated DJ. <laughs> Maybe when I grow up, that's what I'll do. When I do slow down, I'll become a DJ. Okay. But um, I just, I just want to have fun. And, and I, I, you know, first thing I do in the morning is, well, first thing I do in the morning is make a cup of coffee for Jesse. And then, and then, you know, I'm just, I just want to sketch, I want to say I want to create, I want to create, whether it's creating a meal, whether it's the pancakes that I make, you know, mm -hmm. with the branding iron Corvette, you know, or, or, or any of the things I do throughout the day is just, you know, just being creative and, and uh, I, I just enjoy life and, the, and my network of friends. And you sketch every day? I sketch every day. Every day you do every, something. Every day I sketch. Uh, I've got a display board in my office, rather long mm -hmm. display board, and the sketches are up there, and some come down and more go up. And, you know, I see the progress, the development in the designs. The only thing that concerns me a little bit is that I'm not competing against another designer. <laughs> and I think competition always raises the bar. I was about to ask, what's a critique like when you're doing it for yourself rather than a studio of designers? Well, well yeah, that's, you know, I, I, I worry about that at times, you know, and I do. And I do have them arranged in a way where I'm kind of competing with myself. I'm looking at some, I'm looking at others. And... and you know, and I can I can go to the internet and see what other designers are doing in the same field, and that's as close to a competition that I have. And there there are those that who I have asked to critique my work. And, you know. The value of competition in yes. design. Yes. Um, <clears throat> some of us had a, a bird's eye view of the Camaro competition between the teams. That's a story that hasn't been told much. Would you mind sharing a little bit about okay. that? With our there, there, are, there are a number of competitions which I think were great, because I, I, I'm a firm believer that competition always raises the bar of execution. And the case of the Camaro, when we got the green light to build the concept, uh, had advanced design was developing a concept for the Camaro. And like overnight, it really looked like a Camaro. It really looked like one, but it didn't have quite the energy that I was looking for. And it looked like a 68 Camaro quite a bit. And kept pushing, kept pushing. Then I decided to have a second team create a design. The second team had just completed, uh, completed some work on Corvette Z06. And so I had the second team in a secret location working, and I told the first team. Instantly, the first team's design got better. <laughs> it's like, I mean, it just got better. Probably could have just told them they had another team. <laughs> and so we had a competition between the two teams, secret locations. No one could see what the other one was doing. And we had a deadline, and the two teams brought their designs together on the patio. I think you saw an image of two silver Camaras and then my personal Camaro in between. They saw each other's design, they thought I was gonna pick one, and I said, okay, now you've seen the other team's car, you have one more week to work, and they took off. And they continued to work, and we brought them together, and we made a decision, and it was one of the hardest decisions I ever had to make between those two cars. Uh, I feel good with the decision that we made, but there's another Camaro design out there that really looked good that, that didn't make it. That was probably one of the best. I also thought that during maybe one of the darkest periods at GM, during bankruptcy, mm -hmm. uh, and we started work on C7 Corvette, that here's an opportunity where, you know, a lot of people aren't feeling good, you know, there were negative headlines every single day, and that's a terrible environment in which designers are asked to create. So I decided to have a, a different kind of competition. I decided that every designer in General Motors design, 
globally. It's well over 200 designers. I want to hear, I want to see what your idea for the next generation Corvette. So designers in Germany, Australia, Brazil, India, China, Korea, Australia, uh, and here in the States, all submitted ideas. These ideas are flooding in. Some countries, they have work laws where you can't work over a certain number of hours. So they were, t they were working on their regular projects during the day, and at night they were working on Corvettes at home where they go out one exit and go back in another door <laughs> of the design building and continue to work. And the energy was unbelievable. And, you know, there's some people in the company who thought I was out of my mind that put so much into this one project. But Corvette is really, it's the heart of the company. And what it did to energize the entire design organization, I think in many ways, the whole company was very really important. That was a cool competition. Great story. We have a couple of other questions in the audience here. Yes, please. Um, what aspects of your you know, career as a designer do you find the most um, fulfilling? You know, so the, far. Uh, so far. You're so not far. done. <laughs> but but I tell you, I, I think what always excited me the most, and I, I don't know if that fulfilling or uh, to see the look on a designer's face when you pick their design you know when you see that look on their face whether it's a rookie designer or someone who's been there for 40 years when you pick when you pick their sketch they have that same look on their face when I picked Bob Munson's sketch Bob Munson had been around and everyone said oh it's great what the young designer Bob Munson had been there like 38 years. Mm -hmm. And I picked his sketch to do that CTS coup. He had a look on his, you would have thought he was 18 years old. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty special. Yeah. That's a good response. Another question, please. Yeah, um, since there's a large audience of students, do you have any other tips or tricks for those who are about to go into industry? Advice for young designers entering the industry. Yeah, I don't know that I have advice. I just, you know, just don't let anyone tell you no. Just keep pushing. Keep pushing, you know. If you need to make a new plan, make a new plan. Hope is not a strategy. You need to have a strategy, you know, in order to make it. You need to plan. You need to be on time, if not early. You know, I learned at GM that if the meeting is scheduled for 9 a.m., you walk in the door at 9 a.m., you're the last one in the room. <laughs> it's, you know, you need to be on time with everything you do. Excellent. Um, last question. If we were able to zoom forward 300 years and okay. some young people came in here. And I'll be a DJ. Into the, yeah, there you go. Into the Hall of Fame. Um, I'm going to save that question because another one just came in off, the, off oh, that. No. Okay, yeah, okay, gonna, okay, we'll, okay. So I'll let you think about that. Coming from an era of markers and pens and pencils, how have you adopted to modern digital design platforms, or have you? Yes. Yeah, so is it necessary? <laughs> How have I adopted to it? I look at it and I'm entertained by it. And to be honest with you, I have, I don't use a, I use markers, mm -hmm. markers, pencils. I'm very comfortable with it. I, you know, and I don't apologize. You know, I maybe when I grow up, I'll, I'll use it. But you know, now I use markers. I have a big, you know control panel full of, of markers of all types and and I just have a lot of fun with it. It's very empathic way Does, of I working. think the question getting at the ability to communicate your designs. Yeah. Yeah. That language, uh, I mean, you don't find yourself limited by using any you know, traditional tools, am I right? No, I don't, I, I don't feel limited by it at all. 
uh, I feel as though I can work fast. There are times I look at what I've done and I thought, yeah, yeah, if I was working in a digital world, I could take the same design and, mm -hmm. you know, re-spin it in a different way, easier than doing a whole new sketch. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, there's a certain amount of passion that I put into every one of the illustrations that I do that I feel very good about. Yeah. I think there's a story you could share based on a conversation we may have had about sitting down with Jay Leno when he wanted to design his own vehicle uh, and, and how you began that project together. Could you share that with us? Yeah, Jay had, and I've known Jay for many, many years, had a jet-powered bike. And he had joked about, you know, you sit at a traffic light and, and the heat's coming off of the jet engine melting the front fascia of the car <laughs> behind you. you know. And he wanted, a, he wanted to do a jet-powered car. And he wanted to do something that was somewhat like the Motorama show cars that General Motors did in the 50s. And he and I were talking about this on a Saturday morning. And as he's talking, I'm just kind of sketching, doodling some thoughts on what a Motorama-inspired car might be like. And the next thing I knew, it kind of turned into a project, which our design studio in California then took the big idea and a few of my rough sketches, and they developed a very cool car, Echo, uh, Echo Jet? Because of, yeah. yeah, yeah, that sounds right. And uh, two place car, I think really the main cabin was from a Corvette, and uh, it hit a jet engine. Uh, it's a pretty quick car. It was fun the way we introduced the car at SEMA, because you know he didn't have a stage, he didn't have a pavilion or anything there, and so we unveiled it poolside at the Wynn Hotel. And it was an amazing group of people who showed up for that review. It's cool. But again, back to, it was just was a couple of thumbnail sketches yeah, yeah. done. Yeah. Sitting at yeah, a I mean, it was a couple of thumbnail sketches and then, you know, the design team, you know, they turned it into a Where, but, it all, but it starts with that sketching. Yeah. The, you know, don't, there's no tool that I've seen yet that replaces that. You, you know, you can't carry a Wacom tablet around with you everywhere. Right, you, right. You sometimes know, yeah. all you have is a, a three by five card, right? Um, one of the questions we often ask our inductees is, uh, this is before the final, uh, is, is what, what, is there a film in your past? We know there's one in your future, we hope. Yes. But a film in your past that was a real influence on you, that you, you consider your favorite film? Wow. I, you know, instantly I think of Godfather, the first Godfather mm -hmm. movie. I remember the first time I saw it was in Manhattan, which kind of added to the whole drama, and it was night. And, and okay, I've watched the movie about 25 times, and <laughs> so I probably, that's probably it. Uh, um, Casablanca. Mm. And really for the acting and the clothes that they wear in that movie, just, you know. I like the airplanes, too. That's cool. I, I don't want to miss the opportunity. Your, your spouse was giving you a prompt. Do you have another thought on a film that he may have forgotten? Was there something? <laughs> Recently, we watched Borat. There's no one. He was like, what is this? Is this a real person? I'm like, I'm telling you, it's a real person. Uh, this is a range uh, from yeah. the, the classic you know the, the you, Godfather you, series you, to Borat. You, I, I like you probably can't tell, but I'm blushing right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, our final question for you, and, and for those of you who are sending in uh, via chat, and that we will pass along uh, that yeah, information, we'll, we'll and, and we'll get back to you. But imagine we've gone forward 300 years, and this, wherever it is, is still the Automotive Hall of Fame. And a group of young people have come in, and they get to the placard that says, Edward T. Welber. I won't list years of birth and such, okay? What do you hope they learn about you while they're here? What, what, what would you hope that 
someone hundreds of years from now looking back at your life says, this was it. What was it about him? Yeah, that's a tough question. I kind of like these questions. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I I think it's... And I, I don't know even that I can form it into a sentence or phrase or whatever, but but, but immediately I, I think about my passion for design, my commitment to design, how I think in many ways I helped GM design turn a corner. It had been through some very difficult periods and yeah, I think what I did to help it really turn a, a corner was a big deal. Uh, my passion for the people of design. Um, yeah, there are first. There are a number of firsts that were along the way. That in many ways I've never really celebrated. I think. In today's lecture, I talked about it more than I, I ever have in the past because I, I never really saw it in a way as being a celebration. You know. um, but, I, but, I, but it is a part of who I am. And the fact that you know I was the first at this level or that level or the other is significant and there's a lot of responsibility that goes along with it and and being able to manage that is significant as I think about it as I think about it. well thank you for uh, for delving into that because you are one of the figures that people will look at as mm-hmm. a, a barrier breaker a pioneer um, and, and you're just getting started. And that, that's very obvious. We, we, we're all excited about the projects that you're still pursuing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're, we're grateful for uh, those of us who worked with you in the past. Uh, and we're looking forward to what you come up with in the future. Can we please thank Mr. Welburn? <laughs>